Well, folks, good day to you. One and all, a slightly delayed start to the proceedings here this evening. And, uh, well, for those of you that have just joined us, where are we? And that is where we're going to be. GT Masters Season 9, Round Number 5 in GTEs, coming to you from Magnico. And what an amazing circuit this is at Magnico. We are in the lone qualifying session right now. And uh, the man uh, that you have on screen there, that is in fact Luc Lachese, Circuit Denive Magnico. That is where we are going to be. And wow, I tell you what, expecting some very, very good stuff out there today. Let's have a look, see exactly what it looks like so far. Ryan Ottens, the man that finds himself at the uh, front end of the grid so far. Gerald Ferry working his way around. And oh, he's got a purple sector in there in the triple one Porsche. Gerald Ferry already up into that fifth position on the third row of the grid. A 134.01 being his fastest to date. Ryan Ottens, Pity UBA, provisionally on the front row of the grid from Willem Boerter and Luc Lukizi. JJ van Amava rounds out the top 10. He's looking pretty good at this stage of the fight. Andre Steenkamp, the Batmobile man. Oh, he likes that colors, doesn't he? He's out there as well. Gerald Ferry goes to the top. Good evening, everybody. This is Second Gear Productions coming to you live from Magnico. And this is going to be round number five of season number nine. So there Gerald Ferry goes and stops. He's obviously feeling pretty good about that one. Andre Stienkamp still hauling around with uh, the original Batmobile colors there. We're into 9 minutes 59 of this uh, qualifying session. Let's have a look at how that grid's going to play itself out. Gerald Ferry and Ryan Ottens. Wow. From Pity Bear, Willem Boerter, Luke Lucchese and Leon van Weyke only down in the third row. Can you believe it? That's a turn up for the books. Yasumai in uh, seventh position from Graham Steven. Then Robert Briggs and JJ van Amava, who's just joined up on screen right now. Robbie Jeans from uh, Andre Steenkamp. That is your front rows of the grid as you see them there right now. Let's just go a little bit further back than that. There we go. Timothy Stanton, Carl Lawrence, Gerald Maje, Raymond Duggan, Herman Lazarus, Wesley Lewin. And then uh, we have Yaz Samai. Sandra Bakori and Robbie Teens from Peter van der Spey and Willem Pina. So that is your split grid in real terms. That shows you the uh, old hands as opposed to the young hands out there. So Robbie Teens, the top qualifier in this one. As we get them all out onto the grid, they're just about good to go. So we're just about ready to go with this one. It's going to be a humdinger of note. You've got to believe that uh, there's a lot of people in this race that believe that they can win it. A rolling start it is going to be as they uh, work their way around. They're going to do probably a whole uh, lap of this track. Let's just have a look, see where they are. Yep, yeah, that is where they are as they work their way around. Gerald Ferry and Ryan Otten's front row. That's amazing stuff. I think that's utterly brilliant. Pity you bear in the yellow mean machine is the next one that comes through there. As they work their way around, Ryan Ottens and Gerald Ferry, Pity Bear and Willem Boerter, Luke Lucchese. And the white one there is a Leon van Weyck. Don't ever count Leon van Weyck out. Graham Steven right in there as well with Yaz Samai. So your leading grandmasters being a Robbie Teens and a Sandro Bakari. 
as they work their way around let's have a look at that circuit and see exactly how that circuit looks they're right now going through uh, golf that's what it looks like the whole Magnicours circuit not a lot of known names they're obviously the 118 Nuremberg Green Golf Estrel Imola uh, but the other names not exactly really well known to the average garden variety I racer as such so to everybody that's joined us on the uh, stream hello uh, nice to have you guys here with us a nice uh, healthy crew that has already joined up with us and watching this production second year productions bringing you masters season nine round five magnico in gtes so we got porsches out there and uh, we got a bmw we got a ferrari it's going to be brilliant stuff to see how this one's going to play itself out let's have a look at that bigger picture A nice bird's eye view of how that one's going to play itself out. Just look at that. Ryan Ottens once again finds himself nearer the front end of the field on the front row alongside Pity of Bear with Willem Boerter. Look the keys here alongside Willem Boerter. That's a gentlemanly duo of note. Leon van Weyck, Yasemai, the quietly spoken Yasemai. They find themselves out of Grand Stevens. And don't forget about Robert Briggs. Robert Briggs can be blindingly quick on the day as well so Robbie Teens leading out from Peter van der Spey and Sandra Bakari and then Willem Pina in terms of the qualifying times as they work their way around 25 minutes it's going to be then it will be an invert probably fine they're going to invert the top 10 then they will uh, move swiftly into race number two come around now that last little complex onto the start finish line just about good to go as they're going to come off the line the lights go green and it's Gerald Ferry that's going to lead them out look at Willem Boerte he's on the right hand side Peter UB is going to slide up on the inside of him oh there's uh, two cars that have gone off a little bit further back Andre Steenkamp oh it was Luke Lucchese was one of the guys that uh, went off there as well what amazing battle that's going on up front look at that Ryan Ottens and Gerald Ferry alongside one another Willem Boerte is in there with uh, Pity Hubert then uh, just a little bit behind that the white one that is the Antoine Vague oh the, that's just a breakaway too much uh, uh, at the tail end there, Willem Boerte gets himself completely turned around, causes total chaos. And, uh, whoa, that's taken so many cars out of this one. I wonder if Luke's going to reset it, because that's literally lap number one chaos. That is Ryan Ottens that leads them out. Oh, Ryan Ottens uh, is uh, also going to be dropping down, because that was a contact there with Robert Briggs I think that it was just coming uh, back onto the circuit so Robert Briggs the man that is leading them out from Yasemai after the chaos then it is Leon van Veik in there behind that is JJ van der Maber. here comes Graham Stephen in the Marlboro Cullens locking it up pretty heavily but holding on is the uh, Golf Ferrari there of uh, Gerald Maget Robbie T or Pity you bear first of all that's in there and uh, Robbie Teens the original comeback kid directly in there behind him Robert Briggs has just put up the fastest lap as we have an eye there on a villain Pinas he comes to uh, finish his lap look at the guys all diving into the pit lane they obviously now got themselves stuck in traffic Ryan Ottens is in, Sandro Bakari is in, Gerald Ferri is in as well, Timothy Stanton, Peter van der Spey, even Luke Lucchese is in there as well. So now they're all trying to get out of the pits together. Sandra Bakari, Peter van der Spey, Timothy Stanton, they're all diving out there at the same time. 
It's going to be great stuff to see how this one's going to play itself out because it's all been turned completely upside down. So let's have a look, see with the uh, pit stops, who has been in, who has not. So the leading man that's been in for pit stops is in fact Ryan Ottens from Gerald Ferrie, Sandra Vacari, Peter van der Spey. That's one hell of a turn up for the books. Robert Briggs leads them out at the front end of the field. And this one, anything is possible, there's no doubt about it. The quiet is spoken, he has a semi. If ever you get onto the group and... Um, you see what the guys post, believe you me, you'll see lots of stuff of Yasumai. JJ Fonomeva is not going to be left out of this one. He's making good use of what he has to hand. He's got a inherited third. Whoops, we got a spinner there as well. Let's just see if we can pick up who that spinner was. I think that was uh, Peter van Spey was the man that actually spun there. But before we go and have a look at... Uh, those latest incidents let's have a look at what's happened initially so far and uh, it was Gerald Maje who was the first man that uh, registered any sort of incident I don't see that incident there you're probably uh, somebody that knocked into the back of a Gerald Maje as he did not come off the line in the normal period of time that you would expect Willem Pino was the first man that had a bit of an off track, but that was also in the warm-up session as such. Let's have a look at that first incident that happened. That was Hamann Lazarus. Well, that was also in the warm-up before the green flag. So everything happened uh, before it even started. But the first man that went off track, off track was in fact Luke Kizzi. In the middle of that pack gets tipped on the nose. You see JJ also went a bit wide. But he managed to get it together. The dark colored car that was behind him. That's in fact Andre Stienkamp was the next man that came through there. And uh, yeah, Andre Stienkamp holding on to that one. Pretty decent. Look at Kizzi coming back onto the track uh, pretty quickly after that. But then thereafter, it was Andre Stienkamp that had another incident as he came back onto the circuit while all that was happening it was Willem Boerte that got affected by that one the race driver SA Esports oh that was just too late on the brakes coming through there now that also affected you see Leon van Beek in the So Leon van Veek in there as well, also involved in that. A whole heap of chaos. And let's go back to the front end of the field. I think there's still so many of those replays we can maybe do in the split. So Robert Briggs leads out from a JJ van der Maver. That is your first and second positions. The next man coming through there, not having done a pit stop, is Graham Stevens. Then it is Gerald Maje. Remember, he had a bit of a rough time with that uh, golf-colored Ferrari, but he held it all together. The leading Grandmaster out there is, in fact, the Grandmaster himself, Robbie Teens. Behind Robbie Teens, uh, Andres Tienkamp having gone off, but only having that go off in turn number one and not any other incidents thereafter has propelled him all the way up into that sixth position. Just behind that is, in fact, Hamann Lazarus. Hamann Lazarus from Authentic Autos. Leon van Veek, that was a top six qualifier, finds himself down in eighth position. And, uh, well, remember, he's in eighth position, but he is the leading car that has done a pit stop, which is the most important part of all, because having done that uh, pit stop puts him in a very good situation. Sandra Lacar has had a bit of an incident. Let's have a look at that one. Here's Sandra Bakari. So far, so good. And then it was Timothy Stanton that popped up on the inside. So that one didn't work. Let's have a look at Yasumai's incident. The asymmetric racing 102 SA entry. Nice and hard on the brakes with the Porsche. Oh, he just gets dive bombed at that stage of the fight. I think it could have been Hamann Lazarus. Yeah, that was Hamann Lazarus in the well, the original cheaper cars.co.za what's now authentic auto yeah he was just too late on the brakes too loud he tried to miss everybody but it did not work for him unfortunately in that situation so that's how they play themselves out now leon van veek the man that actually is 
almost you could say the lead car because of the fact that he's already done the pit stop lap number five of uh, a possible 15 done already So interesting stuff as a whole. So Robert Briggs takes the opportunity and it gets handed to him on a plate with that initial incidence that they were. And uh, he leads them out from JJ. JJ Funamava is right in there. This is probably the best race that JJ Funamava has had for a long, long time. He's right there where it counts. All he needs to do is get in and out of the pits very, very neatly to ensure that he holds on. Uh, to that position and uh, well the last person that he passed was in fact Yasmaya look at that battle let's get the battle box up there for you that you can have a look at that one they so so close to one another JJ Funamava Graham Stephen on the inside line Robert Briggs the one that's in front that's the three of them together so JJ that's held on so well you can see Robert Briggs has uh, gone off into the future it's uh, JJ Funamava that is under a whole heap of pressure from that Marlboro car of Graham Stephen. Let's ride on board with Graham Stephen. That's what it looks like. He's got Carl Lawrence behind him. He's got JJ Funamava just in front of him. And just in front of that is, in fact, Robert Briggs. So he's right there where he needs to. But remember, these guys have not been into the pits yet. So don't forget about that high-speed train, which is led out by Leon van Beek, Ryan Ottens, Peter Hubert, Herman Lazarus. Uh, after those two incidents he's had, he has not been into the pits. So he's going to drop quite a way down when he goes and does the pit stops. Nine and a half minutes into the 25 minutes. Heat number one. This production brought to you by Gary Fleming, Gary Gazza, the scat man with you from a second gear productions now we go out into the straight hammer down robert briggs jj funamava graham stephen right in there with graham stephen as they work their way through that long right hander but he's holding sway very very neatly is graham stephen another man that's doing brilliantly is gerald Majay staying out of trouble doing it all right and uh, the closest man behind him is in fact the comeback kid robbie teens who is way out of sync with all of the other masters drivers as such there's andre steenkamp that's directly behind him nobody pulling into the pits at the moment yet so i don't think it's going to help us much but let's have a look at the gains and losses there you see how completely upside down the whole thing is the Antoine Vake one position down but having done that pit stop so i don't think that that one really gives us any realistic answers to what we need to know the likes of uh, wesley lewin is out We've got Carl Lawrence, Willem Boerter and Yas Samaya that is a lap down. We've got Luke Lekizi who was one of the fastest, came up top six eventually in the quali. And he finds himself a reasonable distance uh, having had that uh, incident earlier on. He finds himself a reasonable distance down. Now Ryan Ottens is starting to close up on the back end of a Leon van Weyck. He's been putting in some pretty quick lap times. Leon van Weyck not worried about what Ryan Nottens is doing, just doing his own thing. He knows he can do a top five at any given time. A very, very consummate car driver combination that... Oh, just on the edge of the grass as he works his way through. Ryan Ottens trying to close down on a Leon van Weyck interesting to see how that one's gonna play itself out look the keys he's been trying very hard it sounds like he's had an off track as well yep he just uh, got it a little bit on the wide side had to get it all back together Carl Lawrence has also had a bit of an incident in the uh, compact GTE BMW he gets it back on circuit as well so that worked pretty well we saw that Andre Steenkamp had had an incident just now clipping the curb stones both sides carrying massive speed through there that was actually quite brilliant 
and then he just got a little bit too much on the loud pedal the back end stepped away and uh, as that took him out of it we saw that incident with Sandra Bakari earlier on where uh, he uh, got tagged by Timothy Stanton they tried to have a look up on the inside there just wasn't enough space to work that one out and uh, that created that kind of incident so let's have a look at the uh, Grand Masters Robbie Teens and not having been in the pits fifth overall massive gap between himself and the next of the Masters out there Peter van der Spade that is a custom to being uh, one of the uh, quickest masters drivers out there right behind him is Willem Pina and then uh, a little bit further back having been involved in that other incident that is the Palmer that oh you can see the back of that car has had quite a knot and Sandra Bacari looks like he's just taking it uh, a little bit easy yeah the back end of that car has taken quite a knock Andre Steenkamp on his way out of the pits so Andre Steenkamp finds himself in an 11th position. We'll make that 12 because one car's just gone past. In fact, there was Timothy Stanton that just went past him. So uh, Andre Steenkamp in the Batmobile. He does a nice neat exit to the pits there. He has been uh, starting out in that 12th position. He finds himself still in that 12th position. JJ Van not having done a pit stop yet. Look how close he is to Gerald. Very, very close right there where it counts. Let's have a look at the last lap times. Is he in fact making headway on these guys? JJ van der Merwe, 136.8, a 135.6 and a 135 second. Graham Stephen and Robert Briggs. So that means that Graham Stephen is actually closing up on the back end of a rob graham stephen comes in graham stephen dives into the pit what does gerald maje do he's going to work his way around and is he going to come in no he doesn't what about a robbie teams robbie teams comes through ryan ottens he comes straight through now leon van Veek does not have to go in because he has been in already as leon van Veek. so uh Oh, this is going to play itself out pretty neatly. Brilliant stuff. This being round number five, season number nine, sports and GT Masters and the Grand, oh, Grand Masters having a look up on that inside line. Leon van Veek now going uh, into a very, very tight situation as he tries to work his way through there on a Graham Stephen. Graham Stephen finds himself on the outside line. Leon van Veek in the uh, being it car just uh, takes up a little bit more space to make sure that it's all good Peter Hubert is in there as well he is closing up pretty quickly we're right on board with uh, Peter Hubert in behind Graham Stephen that's Leon van Veek directly in front of him nothing much between them oh Gerald Faris right behind him as well so what's the biggest problem? What's in front or what's behind? I'd say both. Yasumai into the pits. Peter van der Spee in and out of the pits. Willem Boerter has had a crash, unfortunately. So not going well for... Ooh, just missing the back bumper. Not going well for Willem Boerter today. A man that's normally right up there where it counts. He's uh, doing a lovely job of this one right now. Some of the guys that normally race that couldn't make it this evening are actually watching on the live stream. Guys, put up some comments. Let's see what you guys have got to say. Put up some likes there on the live stream for us. We're right on board with a PDU Bear. PDU Bear that's sitting in a uh, eighth position right now. Remember, PDU Bear has done the pit stop already. So he's actually, depending on how it plays itself out, probably the man on the bubble, he'll be then sitting on a. Uh, fourth overall Robert Briggs has had an incident oh dear me Robert Briggs it was going so so well the GTE oh just too much back brakes there and uh, that's what happens when you gear it down and you uh, climb on the middle pedal very very loud that's what happens it just turns that back end around 
so let's go back to the front end of the field and well if only once JJ van der Meer in the Fanatec Porsche can say I led a round of GTE Masters in my Porsche irrespective of what anybody else did Robert Briggs in that second position he's got he's just gone past Carl Lawrence there's a fair gap now back to this little battle and uh, that is Gerald Maje, Robbie Teens right in there behind him. So master and a grand master. Oh, well, that turns itself up. And JJ van der has come in. Robert Briggs has come in. Robbie Teens has come in. Gerald Maje has come in. And who goes to the front end of the pack? Ryan Ottens. And who does he bring with him? The man that was also in the top six. Uh, initially in this race and that is Leon van Weyck don't count out Graham Steven in the Marlboro Porsche he's right in there as well not far behind that Billy Hubert is in the house Gerald Ferry that qualified front row of the grid and then uh, JJ van Amava just outside of the top five either way I see Timothy Stanton just passed Gerald Maget let's sit with this queue of cars and let's see what it looks like from inside we're 18 and a half minutes into the 25 minutes. We're riding on board with JJ van Amava. The car directly in front of him is yet another Porsche. In fact, all the cars in front of JJ van Amava are Porsches. They're obviously, the guys have felt that uh, this one is the quicker as opposed to the Ferrari and the BMW. The leading BMW is in fact Timothy Stanton, JJ van Amava all over the back of a Peter Hubert, Peter Hubert all over the back end of a Gerald Ferry up across the uh, climb they go it's very very tight there a lot of uh, elevation getting a little bit of understeer I see a bit of a flicker there on uh, Peter Hubert's car it's going backwards and forwards all the time let's hope that connectivity doesn't affect him too badly Leon van Weyck trying to make the move or oh, timothy stanton was making a serious comeback and timothy stanton unfortunately after having two brilliant race meetings one after the other climbs hard on the gas and just runs it a bit wide and loses a bit of time gets a bit of a knock on the nose that was uh, Gerald Maje but not all bad Robbie Teens has come into the pits and that's going to cost him Robbie Teens into the pits because Sir Herman Lazarus is already on his way out and the next man going to come through there will then in fact be Raymond Duggan going back to the front end of the field Ryan Ottens Where's Graham Steven? There comes Graham Steven. Where's Gerald Ferry? Leon van Weyck, Peter Hubert, and JJ van der Merwe. Peter Hubert closing down on the back end of a Leon van Weyck. But Leon van Weyck is also very, very close to the back end of a Gerald Ferry. And the nice part of that is not they can't do much about it, but at least they can see the Marlboro Porsche of Graham Stephen in front tantalizingly close look at the elevation as they work their way through that sector of the circuit so for those of you that uh, joined us late where are we today we uh, the GT Masters in GTEs at Magnico round number five season number nine this is how it's playing itself out and uh, well, if we look at that, Ryan Ottens from a Graham Stephen, and if you look at the points, Luke Lucchese is nowhere near. Michael Stephen, Willem Boerta, Timothy Stanton, Leon van Weyck. That's going to turn everything upside down if you look at that uh, point structure with the way that they are now. Probably the biggest winner of that one is then going to be uh, Leon van Weyck, the man that we ride on board with, because uh, Ryan Ottens is... Uh, down in seventh position on the log graham stephen finds himself in the tenth on the log gerald Ferree is ninth on the log leon van veik is fifth on the log so he's going to massively impact on those cars in front of him uh pity you bear is uh, presently eighth on the log as well as we ride on board with Leon van Weyck but we've only got three minutes to go 
Let's go from the top end down. It's oh dearie me, Ryan Ottens just manages to miss uh, Carl Lawrence, and uh, that's not the first uh, situation that Carl Lawrence has found himself in today. Just hasn't worked for him. The two of them trying to work their way uh, nice and neatly into that corner, and that BMW just loses the tail end and uh, turns itself around. That's the best he could do. So Ryan Otten starts yet another lap, and it is in fact his last lap. Here comes Graham Steven. But the problem for Graham Steven is look at this crowd behind him. There's Leon von Weyck. There's Gerald Ferry. And uh, Peter Hubert has just gone past Gerald Ferry with JJ van der Merwe. So that little passing maneuver, uh, that was uh, Peter Hubert that passed Gerald Ferry. Look at that. Trying to close the line off. But uh, Peter Hubert already had the pace coming out of the corner. And he made that one stick very, very neatly. Ryan Ottens working his way around on the very last lap. But I think we're going to stick with this battle because this is Battle Royal. JJ Fanameva puts it up on the inside line. He says, thanks very much. I'll take uh, that position over if it is at all possible. Gerald Ferry just in front of him. There's Pity Hubert. Leon van Weyck sitting up in uh, a decent third position. Luke Lucchese trying everything in his power to try and close up. He's just put up the fastest lap as Luke Lucchese. He's worked his way back to seventh, having started the fifth fastest man as uh, we on the very last lap with Ryan Ottens. And the man that's in behind him is Willem Boerte in 18th position. Five seconds Ryan Ottens has got on uh, the next man behind him which is a graham stephen that's lying second overall the checkered flag is being readied for this man that'll be the last corner that he goes through and it's going to be honors for ryan ottens as he comes across the uh, start finish line and takes the checkered flag the next man to come through behind that will be graham stephen leon van veik peter Hubert. Gerald Ferry, JJ Fanamava, here comes the high flying Luke Lucchese. He's made up massive positions now towards the end. Behind Luke Lucchese will be, oh, Gerald Mose just a bit too loud. And here comes Timothy Stanton. Timothy Stanton gets gifted an extra position and uh, he pops up and takes that one. Timothy Stanton ahead there on the last corner of a Gerald Maje. Then we've got Andre Steenkamp, Robbie Teens, the next man that's going to come through. Remember, Robbie Teens is then the leading grandmaster out there today is Robbie Teens from Raymond Duggan. Then it looks like uh, Andre... No, that's Aaron Lazarus. The next two coming through behind that, that's Willem Pinar and uh, Robert Briggs. Oh, Robert Briggs will be very, very, very disappointed with that. Last man to come through there will be uh, Peter van Spey. Well, second last, in fact, because as you see, Peter had to do two pit stops. Uh, and uh, so did Sandra Bakari and Yasamai. And uh, for that reason, those guys uh, find themselves a whole heap further back than where they would like to be. So that is the last car to come through. That is Sandra Bakari in the Parmalat Porsche. GTE version. Even though he comes through last, he still flashes the lights. He says, that was lacquer. I enjoyed that. No problem with that kind of thing. So let's have a look, see if we can get some uh, results there for you. Results of heat number one. And they're going to go into a three-minute warm-up now. And uh, if we can get those results up for you, I'll try and pull that up quickly as soon as the computer allows us to actually do it. Hopefully it's going to allow us to do it. No, the computer's not giving us that information yet, but there we go. So that's the Grand Masters, uh, Robbie Teens from Willem Pina, Peter van der Spey and Sandro Bakari. Then we have the Masters plays out like this. Ryan Ottens from Graham Stephen, Leon van Weyck, Peter Hubert, Gerald Ferry still pulls up a top five. Great stuff. JJ van Amerva, Bigfoot Express, lovely stuff. One of his best to date. A seriously recovering race driver, SA Pantera Racing, Luke Lucchese, clawing his way 
back up to that seventh position. And then Timothy Stanton from Gerald uh, Merger. Andre Stienkamp uh, back in the game again after a long uh, cutoff. I think he'll be happy to be inside of the top ten. And then Raymond Duncan from Haven Lazarus. He'll be disappointed with that one from Robert Briggs. He'll be very disappointed with that one. Willem Boerter. He'll be very disappointed with that one as well. That didn't play out the way that they wanted whatsoever. So if you look at the overall results... Robbie Teens leading out the Grand Masters, 11th overall from Willem Pinar, Peter van Espey and Sandro Bakari. Now, uh, having said all that, let's just have a look-see. We've got uh, just one minute. Luke Lucchese was the uh, highest point scorer going into this on 141. Then it was Michael Steven on uh, 124. Now, that's going to create a massive turn-up in the books just with those two alone. Then we've got Willem Boerter, and Willem Boerter nowhere near where he would have liked to have been whatsoever. So that is all total chaos. Leon van Weyck on 101 is going to rock it. He is going to uh, make a whole heap of headway. And uh, that third position in the being IT Porsche, the 175, that's going to put him in a very decent position. Francois Hubert was just three points behind him going into this one. And, uh, well, we're going to have to see how it's going to look after the feature race because, uh, wow, this is a quick shaft here at that one before they go to grid. Luke Lekizi, Michael Steven, Willem Boerder, Timothy Stanton. He must be desperately disappointed with this one. Francois Hubert, Ryan Ottens on that 89. Going to go for a big climb up the mountain with this one. Jill Ferry doing his uh, championship no harm whatsoever either with what he's done so far today. So here we go. This is going to be the remix grid. Hopefully that grid will come up for us again. Don't know why the grid's uh, dropped off. There we go. Raymond Duncan from Andres Steenkamp. This is now the invert. Gerald Mose from Timothy. St now this is Timothy Stanton's opportunity to make a move on this one. Because now he starts in uh, fourth position. The Roland Manifolds racing entry. Look the easy in fifth. He's going to be the danger man. If Look the gets uh, gets through and gets away, it's good night, nurse. Uh, cheers and goodbye. JJ Fanamava. That's had a very very good round so far for JJ Fanamava. Uh, out of the AMG Mercedes-Benz and into a Porsche for this one. Gerald Ferry and uh, Pity Hubert with Leon van Weyck and Graham Steven. Now, that is your invert. Now, Ryan Ottens finds himself in that 11th position, and uh, that's a long way down for Ryan Ottens for all, seeing that Luke Lucchese is so much further forward. It's going to make it very, very difficult for Ryan Ottens to come out tops with this one. So for those of you that have just joined us, this is where we are. It is round number five, season number nine, Magnico Masters und Grand Masters. That is out there this evening on this magical Magnico circuit. Right, so let's get a track map up that we can see who be where and what and how. Let's get a battle box up there. We can see who's going where. So, Robbie Teens, the Grand Master on the front row of the grid. He will be desperate to hold on to that. Keeping in mind that his nearest competition is Willem Pina, Peter van Spain, Sandro Bakari. And they sit down respectively 14th, 15th and 16th position. Raymond Duggan on the front row of the grid, a 4.98 A-class rating uh, for Raymond Duggan in uh, iRacing. Uh, 4.87 for Timothy Stanton, he's really rocketed. Willem Pina, 4.99 A-rating by Willem Pina and uh, that man coming off 15th position in this race number two from Magnico. A lovely circuit. I just wish there was slightly more names that we could refer to. 
on this Magni Plus circuit because uh, apart from uh, Imola, the 180S rule, Golf, Adelaide, the rest is uh, kind of Greek. Uh, it, it just, it's, not, it's not names that you can really work with uh, on a commentary point of view, but uh, there is the field. As they work their way around, it's going to be awesome stuff when they get going. Let's see how this one's going to play itself out. The nerves will be uh, at an ultimate peak right now. Look at that. What a lovely sight. Raymond Doug and Robbie Teens. Andre Sinkham, Gerald Mose, Timothy Stanton, Luke Lekeese, Jason van Amerva, Gerald Ferrie, Peter Joubert, Leon van Weyck, Graham Steven, Ryan Ottens, Willem Pina. They're all in there. All the biggies. They come to play and the pressure is on that man. Rob Beatings, the original comeback king. Now, Raymond Duggan will fancy himself to try and get the whole shot, obviously. And uh, he'll be hoping that uh, Robbie Teens, being so far ahead of everybody else, uh, 12 or 13 positions ahead of the rest of the people that he's fighting against in the championship, uh, he'll be hoping that Robbie Teens will be a slightly submissive. That will give Raymond Duggan the gap because they all know that Luke Luke is in that sixth position. He be a coming. There's no doubt about it. Andre Stienkamp, he needs a biggie. He wants a biggie back after such a long break. Timothy Stanton, this is his opportunity to make up a lot of the points that he lost. Gerald Mazay dives up into that second position. Timothy Stanton tips his back bumper and unfortunately that's going to take Gerald Mazze right out of it. Gerald Mazze had a brilliant start there but just that light contact up against the bumper. Robbie Teens has dropped down a whole lot of positions. Timothy Stanton finds himself in the correct position. He's on the right hand side of the circuit but here comes Luke Lekeese. Luke Lekeese is going on the grass to go past Timothy Stanton. Can you believe it? He's already up into third. Just three corners in. And uh, look, the keys is right in there. Ryan Ottens has had an incident. Hamlin Lazarus has had an incident. Willem Pina has had an incident. In fact, there's chaos just a little bit further back. Let's see what happened there. It looks like Willem Pina was... I think he was one of the last people that arrived on the scene. And uh, literally had nowhere to go. Look how many cars were off already before that. I think the whole thing started off with uh, Robbie Teens. Everybody taking the opportunity to try and blast past the Grandmaster. They was trying to. Oh, he was just too loud going in there. Whacked into whatever was on the inside of him. I think it was Ryan Ottens, in fact. Uh, Peter Ube. No, it was Peter Ube that he took out. So let's see how that one affected Gerald Faree. Luke Lekeese on the grass. How does he get it right? Only Luke Lekeese would know how he does that. Yeah, that was... Uh, he just had nowhere to go with that one. And that took uh, Pity Hubert out of it as well. So a couple of guys that have already gone into the pits. Raymond Duggan, the man that's doing it all right. He leads them out. What a gap he's got already from Andre Steenkamp. Leon van Weyck has made use of this opportunity. Raymond Duggins has put up the fastest lap, but remember, of the uh, front 10, he's probably the only guy that's got a pretty decent open gap in front of him, and uh, that's what makes it possible for him to uh, put up those kind of lap times. Timothy Stanton, oh dear me, Timothy Stanton has got himself uh, off again, and uh, well, it's just been a terrible day that a rise to fame for Timothy Stanton has come to a screeching halt. Look how much time Peter van Espey lost there. And then reversed back right in front of a Timothy Stanton. So total chaos. Timothy Stanton, Peter van Espey, uh, Robert Briggs, all of them are already into that pit area. Robbie Teens is in there as well. Gerald Ferrie is in there. Remember, you can go in on lap number one and fuel the fat and uh, get yourself all the way to the end of the race it can be done it's your choice if you want to go in if you're sitting in the traffic Raymond Duggan and Leon van Weyck there you can just see Raymond Duggan uh, far ahead of him 
Oh, these guys go. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Leon van Beek. But the reason for that is because Graham Steven is all over his back bumper. Graham Steven's right in there. Not giving anything away. Raymond Douglas has put up the fastest lap of 134. The only man to break the 135 barrier. Timothy Stanton, Peter van der Spey, Robert Briggs. All of these guys are still in the pit area. They need to get out there as quick as what they possibly can. Let's have a look at the uh, pit stops. Who has already been in and who has it? We've got to go to Graham Stephen. we got to go to Graham Stephen. He's all over the back of Leon van Wyk. Putting massive pressure on the back end there of Leon van Wyk. Bit of a gap. Three seconds to Robbie Teens. Now, Robbie Teens is still the leading master. No, sorry. Sandra Bakari from Willem Pina is the leading master. Timothy Stanton, Peter van Spain, Robert Briggs are terrible for them. Uh, Timothy Stanton must be totally distraught at this stage of the fight. So let's go from the top end down. Raymond Duggan. There's the man in second. There is third. There is fourth. There is fifth. There is sixth, seventh, eighth. Can you believe it? Ninth position, Sandra Bakari. And then a little bit of a gap back to Herman Lazarus. Let's go back to that ninth position of Sandra Bakari. And uh, what does it look like going forward from a Sandra Bakari? Pretty much just cars everywhere. Try your best not to overdrive it. So tantalizing when you see JJ van Amerva right in front of you. A man that did brilliantly in lace number one. And now you're all over his back bumper. Carl Lawrence finds himself in a pretty decent position, but remember these guys have not gone into their pit stops yet. Ryan Ottens, no, Luke Lucchese is the leading, once again, the leading pit stop man. Peter van der Spey uh, did eventually come out of the pits, but he's been in for a long, long time. How's the car looking? Yep, it's all uh, fixed up and good to go. Comes flying out of the pits. Probably somewhat irritated, frustrated, and not a happy camper. Looking at the Grand Masters, it's Sandra Bakari. That is the leading Grand Master. Now, remember, second in the Grand Masters is, in fact, Willem Pina. But now, Willem Pina is four positions down. You've got an eighth position and a twelfth position. Willem Pina has also not been into the pits yet, which means that Robbie Teens is the leading grandmaster that has had a stop so far will that uh, have an effect at a later stage yeah very possible very very possible as uh, sandra bakari stays right out of the way doesn't get involved in that one whatsoever so it's robbie teens that's staying completely out of the way and jj van der has come in that's the leading runner that has come in so far as JJ van der Merwe. Hammond Lazarus goes past. Luke Lucchese does not need to go in because Luke Lucchese has already done his pit stop. Well, Robbie Teens is known as the comeback kid, but in this uh, race meeting, I think Luke Lucchese is the man that's going to be known as the comeback kid. He is the leading man that has done his pit stops is Luke Lucchese. Directly in front of him is, in fact, Herman Lazarus. There he goes. There comes Luke Lucchese in the background. So that's the distance to Herman Lazarus that he has to close down if he wants to go one further forward. Leon van Beek still got that same problem, and that problem is called Graham Steven. Seven and a half minutes into this 25-minute race number two, top 10 invert, lap number five, round number five, season number nine, a Magni course. And this brought to you by Second Year Productions in conjunction with Mr. Luke Lucchese, the new comeback kid, Luke Lucchese, that is uh, putting this all together for us. So Graham Steven on a Leon van Beek. That's a lovely battle. Another reasonably close one is Carl Lawrence in the 194. 13 positions up is Carl Lawrence. While everybody else had problems, he kept it all nice and smooth in race number two. Race number one didn't work out for Carl Lawrence. 
not at all in the compact gte bmw but this time it's worked out pretty well for the man in the 194 it's looking pretty mm -hmm for him right now look the keys he just goes and posts the fastest lap time a 134.19 now if you look at the last laps 134.19 the man directly in front of him is Hamann Lazarus remember I just showed you and he did a 135.6 that means that he has taken 1.5 seconds out of Hamann Lazarus in the last lap the only other people doing 34s is Raymond Duggan right at the front and then Willem Boerter much better race Willem Boerter uh, round number two and Andre Steenkamp Andre Steenkamp wow He's putting up some very decent pace. Started in 10th, up into 5th position, doing a 134.76 is the fastest lap that he's actually put up out there. So, uh, yo, he's doing a pretty solid job. The interesting thing now is that Willem Boerte in that uh, multicolored, yo, there's some serious paintwork on that DuPont-sponsored uh, car of his. I think that is a Corvette that he is in. Yep, yeah, that looks like a Corvette. Using the whole track more and a bit extra. That would have cost him just a little. But Willem Boerte is putting up some very quick lap times. A 134.8. A 134.9 by Leon van Weyck. A 135.5 by Raymond Duggan. Now Raymond Duggan probably has been in a little bit of traffic. That's why he's been a little bit slower on the last lap. But even then, Raymond is going to have to really hoof it up to ensure that uh, they don't break that three-second barrier on him. Gerald Maze a little bit earlier on with this incident. And uh, trying everything, there was the Castrol entry. And then he just uh, overdid it how's that for a word for the day he just overdid it and uh, tried to get it all back together again but it didn't work out for him so look the keys the lead man that has done the pit stops but raymond duggan still three seconds ahead of leon van weyck leon van weyck i do believe is a little bit involved with what's happening behind him being graham stephen and that could be uh, holding him up just a little bit. Keeping in mind, as uh, they come through, that that's the next man behind them is uh, Willem Boerter. And Andre Steenkamp, not that far, pretty much in the same shot from Carl Lawrence. And then the leading uh, grandmaster, Sandra Bakari. Does Raymond Duggan go into the pits? No, he doesn't. Does any of that front group go into the pits, including Sandra Bakari? nope none of them do that is in fact Sandra Bakari in the palm of that entry that you see there on screen everybody just keeps on trucking let's have a look at the last lap times how does it play itself out a 35-1 a 34-9 two tenths Leon van Weyck not enough to catch up to a high-flying Raymond Duggan looks like he might just be able to pull this one off Leon van Weyck not far behind that Leon van Weyck having a look there at Graham Steven, but uh, he's got to keep an eye on the mirror because Willem Wurt is right there. He really is. And Andre Steenkamp putting up some very good pace. Carl Lawrence, brilliant stuff. Sandra Bakari right in there as well. Then a look look easy. He finds himself in eighth position. He started in seventh, but he's doing some blisteringly fast times. He is a look look easy. The last lap that he was on was a 133.96. A 133.96. That's crazy stuff. Let's have a look at those uh, best lap times. There you can see a 133.96. So Luke Lucchese is head down. Probably a bit of red mist if you ask me. And he is tracking hard at this stage of the fight. 135 1 134 8 well slowly but it, you would think that Raymond Duggan's going to be closed down but in fact he's not being closed down he is holding on to uh, that little gap that he's got there 
Let's take away those best times and let's rather have a look at those pit stops because that is much more a realistic factor of what we're going to see here. And look, look easy. A 133.94. Can you believe it? That is blisteringly quick. There's not a single person other than Luc Lucchese that's broken the 34 uh, marker as such. A 34-3 by Willem Wurter. A 34-5 by Raymond Duggan, the man that's leading out. A 34-2 by Ryan Otten. So three tenths quicker than Ryan Otten's best time. And Ryan Otten's being the second fastest man out there in terms of general lap times as well the one of the big hitters has had an incident uh, earlier on that was uh, leon van veik let's see what happened to leon in the being it car oh he just got tapped around gets it going reasonably quickly Yo, the guy gets that power down so that was a bit of a biggie for Leon van Weyck that cost him. And then also Peter van Aspey had a bit of an incident all by himself. Peter van Aspey, the 201. Third overall in the Grandmasters. Just a little bit too loud going in there. Back in steps out just a smidgen. And uh, that takes Peter van Aspey out of that. So look, look easy. He's lost that now. 33 no, a 34.7, which uh, makes him the third fastest man out on circuit on that last lap. So, not his utmost quickest as such. And let's have a look. Sandro Vaccaro on his way out of the pits. Sandro Vaccaro is, Sandro Vaccaro is in fact, the lead grandmaster. So, there's your lead car. That is Raymond Duggan in there behind him. Graham Steven. Willem Boerter, Leon van Weyck a little bit further back, five seconds in fact, Carl Lawrence, then it's Luke Lucchese, but remember Luke Lucchese has already made the stop, so Luke Lucchese and Ryan Ottens, the big thing is what's the gap between them, 5.3 between Luke Lucchese, where's Ryan? There he comes into the picture now. That is Ryan Ottens almost in the same shot. 15 and a three quarter minutes that we've done of this 25 minutes. Lap number 10 of a possible 15 laps. When are the big hitters going to go in? And it's now. Raymond Duggan has gone through. Graham Steven goes in. Leon van Weyck will go in as well as uh, Willem Boerter. Carl Lawrence is going to go in as well. So Luke Lucchese says, hello, gents. Have a nice day. I'm out of here. And clocks straight past everybody except for one of two people that have not been into the pits yet. And that is, in fact, Raymond Duggan. Now, there's 12.4 seconds between the two of them. Let's have a look at the... Uh, pit times so standing from anything from seven to nine seconds pit lane you're looking at 28 29 seconds which to my mind means that when Luke Lucchese sees Raymond Duggan going into the pits he will also see the front end of the field at the very same time Gerald Ferry runs it just a little bit wide and uh, Luke Lucchese closing up on him. Gerald Ferry stays right out of the way. He had that uh, incident earlier on that's uh, taken him right to the back end of the pack. So Raymond Duggan and lots of clear air. Look at that green number one. Completely away from all, everybody and everything. Now, if he is putting up faster lap times than Luke Lucchese, then he must stay out. If he's putting up slower lap times than Luke Lucchese, he must go into the pits. And that being the case, Raymond Duggan goes into the pits, which means that the next group of cars coming through, Luke Lucchese, comes to the front. Luke Lucchese, and there's Ryan Ottens in the background. Ryan Ottens will be pretty chuffed. And then here comes Hammer Lazarus. So Lazarus is having a pretty good one. 
a whole lot better. But Herman Lazarus has not been into the pits yet. And that man behind him, Graham Stephen, will not want to get held up with uh, the fresher tyres. Herman Lazarus holding sway at this stage of the fight. He's not going to go and give that one away. But Graham Stephen can't stick around too long. Because look at the next man that's in there behind him. It's Willem Boerte. Andre Stien comes into the pits. 18 and a half minutes gone of this 25 minutes. Hope you guys are enjoying this one with us. Give us a nice laugh. <laughs> flashing the lights saying, come on guys, we got to go, go. Willem Boerte in behind Hammond Lazarus saying, please Hammond, don't hold me up. I've got to get to that guy in front of you. And there's not a lot of time left. There's only six minutes to go. Look, the keys leading them out. Is Hammond Lazarus going to go into the pits? Probably will. How far will that drop him down? I'm going to hazard around about uh, five positions is what he is probably going to lose. Willem Boerte needs to get up on that inside line. Does exactly that. Unfortunately, he's now going to be on the outside. But I do believe that uh, they'll make sure they don't make any contact. Uh, commentator's curse. Uh, Timothy Stanton actually slows it right down and gives him that position back. And he stops once again and gives that position back. So nice one there. Herman Lazarus saying, sorry, my error slows down, gives the position back and ensures that it is all good. Pity you bear in there behind Yasumai. That's the fight for seventh position. The highest that uh, Yasumai has been towards the end of the race in a long time. Herman Lazarus on his way out of the pits. That means most everybody has been in and out already. Now we'll get a realistic view of those gains and losses. Look, the keys, he started in the sixth position right up to that first place. Five up. Ryan Ottens, brilliant stuff as we watch Pity You Bear all over the back end there of Yasumai. Just in front of that is, in fact, Leon van Veek. That's a massive battle that's going on uh, at this stage of the fight. And uh, Graham Stephen is going to be ahead now of uh, Raymond Duggan. Pity for Leon van Veek that he did have that one incident. Graham Stephen passing Raymond Duggan. How did that one play itself out? Exactly like that. Literally moved out of the way and uh, made that spot available. 21 minutes gone out of this. 25 minutes. What a race it has been. It's been utterly brilliant stuff. Pity you bear. Oh, he's got the pressure on Yaz. Oh, Pity you bear is going in. Pity you bear back into the pits. Oh, my goodness. That is going to cost him big time. Back to the front end of the field. This Luke Lekezi from Ryan Ottens. There comes Graham Stephen. There's Raymond Duggan. There's Willem Boerter. There comes Leon van Veek, Yasumai right in there behind him. And then there's Carl Lawrence from JJ van der And then our leading grandmaster in the Pomelot entry rounds out the top 10. Three more minutes to go. Let's have a look at that one. It's Sandra Bakari in uh, first position. 10th overall from Willem Pinar in a 14th position in the Castrol car. That is uh, Willem Pinar. So 14th overall, 2nd in class. Robbie Teams, 15 positions down. Not what he wanted whatsoever. He was uh, 14 positions up on any and everybody of the rest of the guys in his class. And it just didn't work out for Robbie Teens and then Peter van Spey just a little bit further back from there. Yasumai is in attack mode on the back end of uh, Leon van Veek. I see the white flag has already come out. Because it is a lap number 15. Such has been the pace. So this is the last lap as we ride on board with Yasumai. Sixth and a seventh. Oh, there's been chaos up front. And that looks like... 
Oh, I'll try and pick that one up for you. Leon Tron Wright went past Willem Boerte. So it must have been Willem Boerte that uh, went off the track. Yeah, that's Willem Boerte. That's where that incident happened. And they get it back onto the circuit again. Let's go back to Luc Lucchese. Luc Lucchese leading them around very very neatly he's just got a couple more turns to go at Yasumai let's have a quick look again at Yasumai all over the back of a Leon van Vijk with Willem Boerte directly in there behind him Luke Lekezi we're gonna have to go back to him in a couple of seconds because he's coming through to the last corners now what a magnificent battle this one is but we gotta go to Luke Lekezi as he comes through to take the checkered flag there goes Luke Lucchese. What a win for Luke Lucchese. And he puts up the fastest lap on the last lap. A 133.795. From dad to dad. Well done, Luke Lucchese. Ryan Ottens, Graham Stephen come through. Raymond Duggan is going to be the next man. And look at that queue behind him. Raymond Duggan, Leon van Veek, Yasemai and Willem Boerte. Very close to one another. Carl Lawrence, he'll be happy with that one as opposed to race number one. JJ van Amava. Then it'll be Sandra Vicari, the leading grand master in the Parmalat Porsche, will come through. And uh, that's just the head of a pity you bear. Herman Lazarus, the next man coming through. Semi okay with that. I think he will be. Then it's Andre Steenkamp, the Batmobile man in the Rockstar car the second fastest of the bmws out there next one to come through will in fact be willem pina and he's the last man out on track with the kestrel entry that will be coming across the start finish line so major turn up for the books in terms of oopsie <laughs> that's another way of doing it but when you've already finished your race it doesn't really make any difference it was Peter van Espey that did a little duck and dive across there. So let's have a look at those results. That's the uh, second race of the day. Sorry, that's heat number one. We don't want to see that. We want to see the feature race. There we go. Look, look easy. Well, he's got to be the new comeback kid. He's look, look easy. Two massive drives. Posting the fastest lap on the last lap of the race as well. Putting it all on the line. I mean, he had 14 seconds on Ryan Ottens at that stage of the fight. But he decided he's just going to uh, go and see if he can stick in one quicker lap. So multiple fastest laps for Luke Lucchese. Ryan Ottens in the Alpha uh, Esports entry. Coming through in second from Graham Stephen, Raymond Duggan, Leon van Veek. No matter what happens, that being IT entry is pretty quick. The red racing entry of Raymond Duggan in that fourth position, I think he'll be pretty happy. Yas Samai, I think he'll be pretty chuffed with it overall. I think it's one of his best for a while. Willem Boerte, the race driver SA Esports entry in that gaggle of cars that came through. There was Raymond Duggan, Leon van Veek, Yas Samai, uh, Willem Boerte. There was all five of them all together. Carl Lawrence, I think, will be pretty happy with this one. Coming up eighth ahead of... Probably unlucky JJ van Amava to be down in ninth. Sandra Bakari, the leading grandmaster out there from Willem Pina. And then Robbie Teens behind that. Let's go a little bit further down that uh, results. Let's see where Peter van Aspey came up. Yep, there's Peter van Aspey that uh, came up at the back end of that pack. So he won't be very happy with this one. Well, there was a lot of contact between a whole bunch of guys. So let's have a look at the points the way that it was so look look easy with one bad result one win probably be enough to keep him at the top end of the field michael steven villain Wurtz, timothy stanton leon van veik he's definitely going to move up a little bit there's no doubt about that uh francois Hubert, ryan ottens is going to be climbing up there as well interesting to see how this one's going to play itself out we didn't see any uh stephen mccarthy out there tonight so that 14th will uh dissipate into at least a 15th because Joseph van Amava has picked up uh, points double points tonight in fact and uh, he was 15th just four points behind Stephen McCarthy going into this one well folks that pretty much wraps it up for today 
Magnico has come and Magnico has gone GT Masters Sports and GT Masters GTE Magnico round five season number nine comes to a closure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please uh, share the live stream and uh, let everybody else watch it as well. From my side, Gary Fleming, cheers and goodbye to you one and all. Look forward to joining up with you guys next week, Wednesday, same time, for round number six, season number nine of Sports and GT Masters und Grand Masters. See you at a racetrack soon. Cheers, everybody.